Mommy, please send fire your position for Marines and emergency. What's going on, guys? You ever wonder what happens when you dial 911? Well, today you're gonna find out. So that's where we're going today, the communication section. Let's go. Knock, knock. Hey, how you doing? Good, I am. All right. This is Luce, everybody. Say hi. Hi. All right. I know you've been working here a while. I've been here for 14 years. 14 years. All right. And what do you do here? What's your position? I'm an emergency dispatch supervisor, and I'm the one who's in charge of the police communications here. So you know all about this stuff out here. Yes. Can you clarify why everyone's wearing camouflage? Is it their normal uniforms? It's telecommunications week and today is Army 15th day. So every day throughout the week you guys have a different uh, theme? Yes. And today's Army 15th day honoring the military? Correct. And that's why you have red, white, and blue balloons everywhere. So what's this area that we're in now? This is the branch where the civilian and sworn supervisors sit to monitor everything that's going on. And that is the shift commander? Shift commander. Commander, sir. How are you doing? All right, he's busy, we don't want to bother him. All right, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here, so let's explain some of this stuff before we go out there. What is this thing right here? This is the radio um, console that we use. Well, we have it up here, we use it to communicate with the other agencies in miami Dade County. Okay, so this is where we can talk to our... Neighboring agencies. Miami, uh, Miami Dade, Port Eagles, Miami Beach, okay. uh, Hialeah. So if we need to contact other agencies, this is what we use. We don't use the phone. If it's an emergency, this is a lot quicker, right? Correct. All right, guys. This next program I'm about to show you, we just got. It's fairly new, but it is super cool. Check this out. So this program is called Shot Spotter. Can you tell us a little bit about Shot Spotter? Yes. It's, um, it's a system that set up throughout the city, they have sensors that are set up throughout the city that picks up any shots that are fired. Okay, so how this system works is they have sensors throughout the whole city and if a sound that's resembling gunshots, correct? Yes. Is picked up within three of the sensors, then it alerts us and triangulates the position to exactly where it should be, like that one right there. So in this case, if there's gunshots in the city, in the areas where the shot spotter is at, this will um, notify us within seconds? seconds seconds of when it happens. And this way we're able to respond very quickly to an area where there's shots fired. And we have a pretty good idea where the shots are coming from. You wanna hear something impressive? This also records the audio. So let's play a clip from one of the incidents that we had not too long ago. This one is the shots fired that came in that advised it was 15 rounds. 15 rounds. With multiple shooters. Okay, so 15 rounds must have been like a shootout or something. Okay, so after the shots are fired, it picks up the sounds, alerts us through shot spotter, it makes a noise. I don't know if we can, is there? We can't recreate that noise? No, I can't recreate okay. that noise. Sounds something like this. Whoop! 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 Look right now, look, look, she's checking. She got nervous. She's like, oh my god, that sounds exactly like... Yeah. It does sound something like that. Yeah, like... Whoop! Whoop! Right? Yes. It does! Luce, question. Can you track where we're calling from? If we call 911 and we cannot communicate for whatever reason, can you track us? Track it? Yes, to a certain extent. When you call from a landline phone, we're able to get an exact address of where it is that you're calling from. So a landline phone is like the phones that are in the house or um, pay phones? Correct. It's anything with a cord. And then when you call from a cell phone, it's not really giving us an exact address. It gives us an area where you're located. Um, 
and with that information we're able to obtain a lat and long and we're able to put it into the mapping system to obtain a proximate avenue and street of where it is that you're located. So it's kind of like the Find My iPhone app is what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so it's kind of like the same thing. It uses the phone's GPS system to ping, I guess? Yes. <laughs> Commander, do you mind if I call you? Because we're on the bridge, it's only right. Do you mind if I call you uh, Commander Kirk? No, that's fine. All right. Let's start with, I call 911, right, on my phone. Where does my phone call go to? Let's go see. So when you call 911, the initial call is picked up by what we call a screen. Okay. And they screen all the calls that come into 911 to find out whether it's an emergency or non emergency, if it's life threatening, um, if they need fire rescue, if they need police. Once they determined if it's a uh, life threatening emergency, they'll go ahead and take care of the call. If they determine that it's a police call, then they'll determine what language it is that's needed and they'll transfer it to um, another call taker who's going to gather the information necessary to dispatch the officers. If they need fire rescue, then they'll go ahead and transfer the call to fire rescue. Fire rescue, fire rescue. Is fire rescue here? It's on the other side of the wall. Oh, so we work right next to fire rescue? Yes. I did know that, but did not know that. Let's go take a look. So again, this is the fire side, and right here, that's the police side. We're side by side, we're neighbors. All right, I'm here with emergency supervisor dispatcher Gomez. Sir, how are how you doing? doing? How's everything? Okay, explain to us what you guys do on this side. Okay, well, we work side by side with the Miami Police Department. Okay. We are fire employees, the fire division employees, and we answer medical and fire-related emergency calls. And if it's in medical emergency uh, nature, we have professionals here that will give life-saving advice on the phone while our dispatchers are dispatching the rescues or the proper apparatus to the scene. Awesome. So our guys are trained? That's correct. Right, they go through a training? Specialized medical training mm -hmm. uh, to assist the citizen mm -hmm. that doesn't have a lot of medical knowledge on the phone mm -hmm. to assist them and instruct them to give them uh, uh, life-saving instructions to help their friend or themselves until our paramedics can arrive. All right, cool. And then this is like a guide that, that they each have? That's correct. This is our, our medical priority system. We actually have it computerized, but this is a reference guide. And any type of medical emergency that you may have, we have instructions to uh, give you dependent on the answers uh, on the emergency that you have. That's awesome. So not only are they trained, but they also have a guide here to help them out and it's computerized as well. That's correct. So you guys are pretty close. So like, hold on, let me get up here. Correct. There's police. Right, we're separated by a short wall. This little wall we're here. We're all one family here. Exactly. Though. So is there any time where you guys just go, hey, we got fire over here by the tree? No, we always communicate electronically because everything needs to be on a recorded line. The whole, everything is public record, so anything that is said amongst each other has to be done via electronic communication. Okay. So even though they are right on the other side of the wall, we will uh, call them on the phone or via the radio. Okay. For that one. See? In order for those guys to get there, these guys have to dispatch them there. It all starts here, that's correct. Alright, I'm gonna head back. Right, awesome. So, loose. So we get the call, we screen the call, we decide it's a 911 police emergency. So, what do we do from there? The call taker enters the call into the system and it goes over to the dispatchers. They enter the call based on the type of crime or incident that's occurring and based on priority. We have priority threes, which are the life-threatening priorities, and then we go as low as priority fives, which is non-confrontational or non-violent um, requests for police where maybe just a report is needed. Okay, so behind us are the dispatchers, correct? Correct. What are their roles? Well, the call takers enter the calls and the dispatchers will go ahead and dispatch the officers to the calls. The city of Miami is a big area, so we have a total of... Four channels. Four channels, but I see five stations. So, what's up? That's correct. Five stations, we have four channels that are manned by operators and the fifth one is the relief operator which gives the breaks to all the other four channels because they can't leave the channels unmanned. Okay, so who's relief? Right here. 
All right. So who relieves the relief? The relief breathes. The relief relieves the relief. Tried to get her in a tongue twister. <laughs> okay. So there is times where we have to go and everyone is uh, one channel covers all four channels, correct? Correct. So if we have a, an important message to give out to an yes. officer. It can be a message, it can be an emergency situation, something like an officer down, depending on where it is, it's going to require additional resources. So they would have to take multiple channels at one time to be able to send those additional resources. So I can only imagine how stressful it can be and I made a comment that at the end of your shift you must be exhausted and Luz corrected me and what did you say? Not at the end of the shift sometimes immediately after working an emergency situation there are times where you have to get up and you have to go walk or take some fresh air or even go into a room that they've dedicated where you can just relax um, a zen. It's pretty stressful at times but they're professionals. They can handle multitasking. How many screens? One, two, three, four screens. So typing, talking, directing. Uh, you said your fingers hurt. Why? Because I'm typing everything I have to type. You have to type and talk at the same time? Yeah. Type and talk, answer the phone. The thing has been going on all, morning, all day. Inner city. Answer your name. We got inner city. Michael Shovel and KSK. So now he's talking to another agency. Okay. JP. I'm being nosy. What what did they want? And who were who were they? Because uh, unit six eight six wanted a routine fifteen, so make contact with the seventeen CBI party over there. What he just said was a unit needed assistance. It was a car accident. A unit needed assistance with a 686. With 686, which was an off duty number. You can record that back and try to figure that out again. You're never going to get it. Every officer has a unit number and that's how the dispatch identifies them and assigns them to calls so is there any way if the officer for some reason cannot give his unit number or her unit number um, is there any way of identifying them? Yes, through the radio number when they transmit, every time that they transmit their radio number is displayed so if an officer is not able to come on the air and identify themselves we're able to through the radio number identify who they are our radios are equipped with a little orange button here at the top. All we have to do is pound that orange button and the dispatchers automatically know that it's our radio that has the emergency. And then like she said before, through our radio number she can identify who we are and where we're at according to what call we are on. Alright, I'm going to show you what happens when we hit the little orange button. This is a test. This is only a test. Okay, anyways, let's do this. Five one nine seven. You have to see. QSL. Go. Three. QSL five one nine seven. I'll reset. So the radio button here, like I said, is on the top. Sometimes it's sitting on our belt, and when we're in the car, it's a little tight, and something, maybe a key, or somehow the button gets pressed, and the alarm goes off like that. This batcher automatically raises and finds out who it is and sees if they're all right. Um, in my case, it was a test, but she still has to raise and make sure that I'm all right, even though she's standing right there because she cares about me. Right, you care about me? Yeah, she cares about me. Uh, so, in that case, I would just let her know that it was an error on my end and you have to reset your radio because otherwise the signal's gonna keep going. Once you hit that orange button, the signal keeps coming. Support position. So. Give me a little bit of what you do, real quick. Uh, when an officer calls, what, what's your role? What, what do you need? What's our it? role here in the support position is we connect the officers to different resources throughout the city, whether they need a record okay. for, to tow a vehicle, whether we need to contact fp for officer and civilian safety, 
And also, we reach out to the dispatchers in case the officers need to make contact with the civilians who are calling for their assistance. All right, Bruce, tell me what this area is. This is the information channel where the officers come to check um, people to see if they're wanted, if they're missing, or the vehicles to see if they're stolen, and articles as well, something like a gun to see if it's stolen. All right, cool. Can you say bye? <laughs> let me let me show you guys how we do it here at the Miami PD Dispatch. Show how it's done. Go. Ha, ha, ha.